Welcome, everybody. Good morning. My name is Martine, and I am honored to be here to welcome you all to Reignite Church's worship experience. No matter how you're joining us today, here, in person, or live on Facebook, we just want to say that we are blessed to have you, and we pray that you are blessed by our service this morning. And thank you so much here for your patience um, as we kick things off. And thank you, Miss Rose, for that beautiful prayer opening us up. Um, we have something very special today, and um, as we get ready to close out our spring cleaning series, our leading lady will be delivering the word today, and we are excited for that, so y'all better get ready. Um, first time with us here in person or happen to be tuning in on Facebook right now, we want to thank you for visiting. We are grateful to have you, and we want you to know that um, we have a very special service and we're excited and we are closing out our series. So don't worry if you've missed the four messages before. Go to our website, www.reignitechurch.org or our YouTube channel to get all caught up and to learn a little bit more about Reignite Church. Now we all know that this month is um, Women's History Month. And this week, our trailblazer in women's history, we'd like to highlight Kamala Harris the first female vice president of the United States and the highest ranking female in U.S. history. So join me this morning in celebrating her. And now for our house rules. Number one, allow yourself to engage in worship. Feel free to lift your hands and sing right along with us. Number two, be sure to take good notes because notes are how you learn and grow. And number three, after service, please go on Facebook, like the service. We'll have it on YouTube later. Um, like that, share it with someone, tag a friend. You never know who needs it and who could be encouraged by that message. Um, Psalms 95.1 says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And that is exactly what we are prepared to do this morning. So if you will stand here in the house and at home watching online, praise team, join me, please. We're going to open up service with a quick prayer and get right to it. Heavenly Father, Lord God, you heard the prayers of my sister Rose. We just ask that you be here in this place with us this morning, Lord God. Move in and out of the service, in and out of the room, touching everything that is here, Lord God, to glorify you. Because that is why we're here. This is not a show. This is for us to be here, to connect with you, to worship you, Father, and to learn from your word. Lord, we just ask that you be with every person here that's represented. Allow them to release whatever is going on in their minds this morning, Lord God, and be ready to have a connection with you today. And be with our pastor, be with our leading lady as they get ready to bring your word to us this morning and let it fall on fertile ground. We love you, Lord God, and we do it all for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Be 
to life. He is our rescue, our shelter, and our refuge. He is the author of our story, and he knows that we need him, but he just wants us to know that too. Amen? How we need his help, his guidance, and his wisdom to get through every second of life. Psalm 71, 12 says, oh God, don't stay away. My God, please hurry to help me. In this next song, we are encouraged to just cry out to Jesus. We've declared this morning in our set how amazing he is, how unstoppable he is. We've thanked him for all that he's done. But now we know we need him, so we're laying that pride down on the altar, and we're just crying out for help. Heaven, help me. And we are believing that he can be our present help this morning. Sing this new song with us, church. I can't find the words when I can barely breathe. I'm falling on my knees. Heaven help me, heaven help me. When I can feel you near, when I can hear you speak. I'm falling on my knees. Heaven help me, heaven help me. Help me. Heaven help me, heaven help me. 
find the words when I can barely breathe. I'm falling on my knees. Heaven help me. Heaven help me. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I don't know how many of us are in this room right now that are in that place where we just need to fall to our knees and say, heaven help me. To say the name Jesus, sometimes that's all you need to say. And that covers it all, right? Jesus, help me. I can't do this on my own. I can't walk this road alone. I know you're an unstoppable God. And you did amazing things then, and you're doing amazing things now. Do what you're famous for now, in this moment, Lord. In my situation, do what I know you can. Because you are my rescue story. You're my testimony, Lord God. We just are here just on our knees saying, help us in the big things and in the little things. Father God, we worship you this morning and we dedicate this and all of our praises unto you, Heavenly Father. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us this morning. Kids Church, you are free to go. Pastor. Hey, hey, hey. It's good to see everybody worshiping this morning. I am um, so excited to talk to you for just a few seconds this morning about cleaning. We're finishing our spring cleaning series, and I have someone helping me that I know very well. You know, in our home, we all clean the house together. And so I've invited someone very special to me that I know. Y'all call her leading lady. I call her my wife, my babe, my boo, my mistress, <laughs> my love. Um, she's going to come and she's going to share an amazing word that God's placed on her heart to close out our series. It's very fitting for where she's taking us this morning. And so, God, um, um, I'd ask us to take a moment to pray and, and then <clears throat> invite God in. God, I thank you for opportunity, Lord, to share with my wife the stage this morning, Lord, for you to be highly uh, reverend and that you will give, you will get all glory, Lord, for what we've accomplished today. Father, we ask that you will help, our, help us to set our minds and our hearts, Lord, on your, on your word and your message, Lord, that we will receive it with new oil and new eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, babe. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. No, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. Not for me. Not for me, but we're going to keep it going for the Lord this morning. Because he woke you up this morning, right? So we're going to give him praise. He provided for you this morning, right? Come on, let's keep it going. He's giving you health this morning. There's some people that would love to be here. But because of health, they can't be here. He's your restorer this morning. Come on, y'all. I didn't tell y'all to stop. Come on. He's your healer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, all over this building, all over this building this morning, Lord, we want to thank you. We just want to thank you, Lord. So many times we come in with our wants, our needs, Lord, but we never stop to just thank you for who you are, for all that you've done for all that you haven't done, Lord, because you know what's best. We just thank you, Lord, for being in this place this morning. For where Satan may try to stop, Lord, you said no. This morning, we're going to have a but God moment. In times where things tried to come and stop things or break things up, but you said but God. So we just thank you, Lord, for meeting with us this morning, and we thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. And we give you all praises and honor this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I'm so happy to be with you this morning and to have this opportunity to speak with you this morning on this last Sunday of Women's History Month. This is also um, our last week of the spring cleaning and I just love, I love, I love, I love the song that we ended with. Not because it's Zach Williams. I love Zach, but not because it's Zach Williams, but because I've been there. When I can't find the words, when I can barely breathe, when I can't feel him near, when I can't hear him speaking, I've cried out, heaven help me. And this morning we're going to need some help. We're going to need some help this morning. 
And Pastor has been on fire, y'all, these past couple of weeks. He's been on fire talking about the dust of indifference. He's talking about the buildup of pride. We've talked about unclean lips where we've needed that coal placed. We've also talked about the cobwebs of unforgiveness. Now, before we go any further, let me put a disclaimer out there. If y'all know me, I'm a woman of disclaimers. I'm just going to put it out there now. For some of y'all that know and some of y'all that don't know, I am not pastor. I do not have all that fire and passion that he speaks with. All I can do is be me this morning, and that's all I'm going to do. So I hope that's all right this morning. So in keeping with our spring cleaning that we've been talking about, it's made me think about myself when I clean. You know, I don't know how we all clean, where y'all start. Some people start at different things. You know, for us, we start with the dusting. And I thought about, sometimes I dust, and then, you know, in the midst of the dusting, you got something that's there, and it's like, oh, this needs to be put somewhere else. So you stop the dusting to go place the item where it needs to be, because it's out of place. Now, when you go place the item, then you notice, well, this is a mess in here. So then you start organizing and straightening and fixing things, and then you... You ran out of containers with all this organizing. So then you got to stop organizing, you stop your dusting, now you got to run to the store to get some containers. Well, you're at the store getting your containers, and then while you're at the store getting the containers, you're like, well, I'm here, I might as well grocery shop. I know we need a couple items, so I might as well go on and get what we need right now while I'm here. And if you're like me, I'm sitting there and I'm getting the comp- containers, and then I've realized All of this started with some dusting that I never finished because now I'm at the grocery store shopping. And as I stand in the middle of the store, I find myself wondering, how did I drift so far off from my dusting? How did I get so far from where I started? All I was doing was dusting. And I found a scripture that can match this scenario perfectly. In Hebrews 2.1, if you have your Bible, if you don't, it's on the screen. But if you have your Bible, we're going to be coming from Hebrews 2.1, just one verse. The NLT reads, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. So for this morning, my subject that I want to give to you is how did I get here? How did I get here? And I feel like God gave me this thought, this passion, since the pandemic hit, around 2020, end of 2020, maybe beginning of 2021. So this was for me long before it was for any of y'all. Because as I sat and I thought about how did I get here, I looked at the different things in my life. And I found myself asking, how did I get here? How did I get here? And something, sure, I could put on, well, my mom passed away. A few weeks after that, my mother-in-love passed away. And while my husband traveled to, um, to attend her funeral and came back, we got COVID. Then a few weeks after that, my father in love passed away. So sometimes it's easy to pinpoint how did you get here, but sometimes it's not so easy. Sometimes in figuring out how did you get here, you have to go back. You have to look back. Sometimes you have to dig things up. You have to pull things up. You have to get to the root of how did you get here. And all of us have drifted off task so many times, and we try to find our way back to the beginning. We try to find, back, find our way back to the beginning of where we started. And like I said, Pastor every week has been giving us truth every week about the indifference, about pride, about the use of our lips, about unforgiveness. All of those things are sin. We don't talk about sin that much. We like to say, oh, mistakes, messed up. No, it's sin. That's what it is. 
And what I read in Hebrews is talking about the sin that can lead you away from God. And so, what I learned is that even though pastor or anyone else can be up in front of you talking, he speaks truth. But that doesn't mean that we listen. And there lies the problem. Because a lot of us hear, oh, pastor's talking on pride? Oh, I ain't got no issues with pride. I know. Okay, tune off. We hear about unclean lips. Well, I think I speak nice. I don't think I <laughs> turn off. And that's the problem. We turn off. But what I've learned in our life is that there's some times where, you know, you start out your life with God, and you may have just a little bit of dirt, problem, sin. And if you're careful through your life's journey, you can keep a little bit of dirt at bay. You can keep the sins, not sin as much. You can have not a lot of problems, but that's if, somebody say if, that's if you can stay on top of things with God. But over time, you see the different currents of life, they start to happen, and then you start drifting. Because now you have work, and you have money, you have marriage, and you have kids, you have friends, you have social media, sex, drugs, porn. All of these things can get you wondering, how did I get here? Because you've noticed the dust that's starting to settle on your marriage or the relationship that you're in. And it used to shine so bright, but now somebody else is brightening your day. You've noticed the buildup of pride that comes along with money and with status, where money and status never mattered before to you. But now you feel like, I don't need God. I can throw money at my mess. We've developed unclean lips towards our kids, our mate, our friends, when before you used to never speak an unkind word to anybody. Now it's so easy to raise your voice, to swear, or to cut them down. How did I get here, Lord? How did I get here? And then you also have those cobwebs of unforgiveness when it comes to family, friends, when love once lived there. Because now you figure, it's easy to hold on to this than to let go and let God. They don't, for, they don't deserve my forgiveness anyway, so I'm not giving it to them. Because if I give it to them, then that means it was okay with what they did. How did I get here, Lord? How did I get here? And I was reading a story about Christine Kane and her husband. They wanted to go out sailing, as they've done so many times in the past, taking their boat out just to have a day to relax. They wanted to go out sailing. So as they were sailing, they found the spot that they wanted to stop at. And they said, this is a good spot to just relax and rest for a while. So he told her, Christine, to drop the anchor. And she dropped the anchor like she did so many times in the past. So they were just sitting there, and before long, they fell asleep, took a nap. Then when they woke up, they found that they had drifted so far off from where they wanted to be, and they were actually heading into a storm, because they could see storm clouds. And they had asked themselves, how did we get here? But the thing that Christine said she realized is that although she dropped the anchor, they were not anchored. And there's a difference between the two of those. She said that one will keep you safe, being anchored, while the other one will cause you to drift. So when it comes to God, some of us think that our anchor is set with him because we've thrown it out. We've thrown it out, Lord, I'm throwing my anchor out to you. But really all we're doing is just being drugged and pulled around in the water. We're just going from place to place, drifting. And the thing about drifting is it's so easy because all you have to do is nothing. 
All you have to do is nothing. Have you ever just laid back in a pool? And where you started at one end, you open your eyes, and then you're at the other end? Because you don't have to do nothing. Drifting is easy. So there's a couple of things that I want you to write down. The first thing is that small drifts will cause big shifts. Somebody say shift. Say shift. And I found for me, if I'm being honest and transparent, don't judge me. If I'm honest and I'm transparent, if I go a day without prayer or half a day without prayer, talking to God, or if I, start, if I stop looking at his word, there's been times where, I'll be honest, there's been times where I've gotten angry and I've stopped looking at his word. I've stopped praying because I'm mad and I know what you're going to tell me and I don't want to hear it. So I'm not going to read and I'm not going to pray. But it's in those little small things, the little small shifts that the big, the, the small drifts that the big shifts happen. And I've always said that affairs don't start in the bed. They start with that cup of coffee. Because some people are having a cup of coffee with watching just a little bit more TV than you've watched. Some people are having that cup of coffee flipping on that phone and ignoring your family the way you used to, or the way that you, know, you used to not do. Some people are having that cup of coffee and having them negative thoughts running rampant in your mind and rampant in your house. Some people are having the coffee with going to places and hanging out with people that you know you shouldn't do. You know you shouldn't be there. You know you shouldn't be with them. And before long, you might as well go on and tell Satan to slide on over so you can hop in because the affair's begun. And you forgot about God. That was your first love. Satan uses subtle ways to get you away from God. The TV, the phones, the, the negative thoughts, being around people, being in places. So the second thing I want you to write down is, how do you know that you're drifting? Good question. Glad that you asked. How do you know you're drifting? Look at your thoughts and your actions. You can always tell when you're drifting when you look at your thoughts and your actions. What has your mind been on lately? What are you doing with the result of what your mind was on? They didn't respond to my post. Thought. I'm not going to respond to their post. Action. I'm just going to keep on scrolling. They weren't there for me when my family was in need. Thought. No, I'm not going to be there for them. Action. And that's how it is. What are your thoughts? What are your actions? Somebody say, clean it up. And you know, as I was looking in the Bible, I think the toughest thing I was having the hardest time finding because I was, I was just stuck with God gave me this. How did I get here? How did I get here? And I was looking and looking and looking. I was like, Lord... Where is there a verse where it exactly says, how did I get here? And I couldn't find it. I even went to the Bible scholar, and we couldn't find it together. I couldn't find an exact verse where someone said from their mouth, how did I get here? I couldn't find where somebody had thought, how did I drift it? But I could see in the stories of the Bible where people may have thought, how did I get here? Or they may have asked to themselves, how did I get here? You can look at, in the beginning, Genesis 3, you have Adam and Eve. They had everything that anyone could ever want, but they thought that it wasn't enough and ended up getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden. How did I get here? We were just... And it was lovely. And I'm on the outside. How did I get here? How did I get here? Sounds like some of us today. God gives us everything, or at least he gives us what we need. But it's sad that we can't even consistently come to his house 
to give him praise for what he's done and the way that he's seen a way through for us. How did I get here? And then I thought about Job. I love Job. I love Job. That's probably my favorite book, Job. My, my life verse is Job 23.10. For he knows the ways that I take, and after, the, after he has tested me, I shall come forth as gold. I've been through a lot of tests in my life. And day by day, as I complete one and the next one, God just has me shining a little brighter for him. I love that verse. So, but Job had a lot. And he was actually considered the richest in that entire land where he was at. But he lost children. He lost possessions. He lost his health. Job probably felt like, although he didn't say, how did I get here? But the thing that I loved about Job is he did not ever turn away from God. Friends tried to tell him. His wife tried to tell him, Lord, help me, don't ever let me. But his wife tried to tell him, curse God and die. But he never turned away from God. And Job, to me, is a great depiction of this quote that I once heard. He said, to realize the worth of an anchor, you need to feel the storm. And that is so true for so many of us. Regardless of Job's storms, he knew the worth of his anchor and he did not turn. And I've heard so many people turn away from God for just less. Job lost children. I don't know what I would do if I lost one of my kids. One, he lost all. I'm talking about one. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do if I would lose all of my possessions. I don't know what I would do if I lost my health. I've lost my health at times, but I don't know what I would do if I got into a severe, severe case of it. So I want you all to do something for me. I want you to stand for me because I need crowd participation this morning, baby. I need crowd participation. And like I said, regardless of Job's storms, he did not turn away. So I want y'all to look at Mickey on the screen. Mickey should be up on the screen, and I want y'all to do something for me. My prayer wasn't answered. Turn. They didn't include me. Turn. I wanted the love of my life, and God hasn't brought me my mate yet. Turn. They didn't speak to me. Turn. They hurt me. Turn. I wasn't supported like I thought I should be. Turn. God didn't give me what I wanted. Turn. Lord, how did I get here? I've turned so much that I'm just in a whirlwind where I'm just so far off from you. How did I get here, Lord? And then I went back to Genesis. Y'all can be seated. I went back to Genesis and I looked at Joseph. Joseph was hated by his brothers. Lord have mercy. Hated by his brothers. Sold into slavery. Lied on by Potiphar's wife. For things he didn't even do. She was trying to do. But despite all of those trials that he faced, God kept on, I'm going to put you here. Now I'm going to put you here. Now you're in charge of this. He just kept raising him to higher positions in his life. Lord, what happens to us when God gives us position or money? We don't even go back and thank him. I've heard people ask for things on their job, ask for better jobs. They get it. Where are you? What are you doing for God? And then we have the nerve to get mad at God when he doesn't bless us. Well, I wonder why. How did I get here? Mark 14, you can find Peter, where Jesus told him, you're going to deny me. He's like, no, 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 I'm not going to deny you. I'm not going to deny you. Later in Mark 14, 71, he has denied Jesus for the third time. And in verse 72, Peter remembered what Jesus had said, and he broke down and he wept. Now, I know we're not Peter. We don't necessarily go around saying, I don't know the man. We don't do that. Yes, you do. 
Your actions show that you don't know the man. Every time you have an opportunity to witness to somebody and you do nothing. I don't know the man. I don't know him. When was the last time that you heard somebody speaking ill of God, cussing in his name, and you didn't defend him? I don't know the man. So we may not come out and just say that we don't know the man, but you do in the subtle ways. And the list can go on and on with biblical people that may have asked the question of how did I get here? And here are some ways that you can find that you've drifted from God. If you're ever wondering if you've drifted away from him or if you've gotten far off from him, here's some ways that you can know. It's by your compl complacency. The number one sign is when you lose your passion for something and you become stagnant or stale. Yeah, I know there's areas of ministry I could probably help out with, but I ain't going to do it. Or, yeah, I've signed up for things for ministry, but nobody's seen me. <laughs> or, if you do come, I'm coming on my timetable. I'll show up when I want to. I don't show up if I don't want to. The passion is gone. And that leads to carelessness. Have you ever gotten something like a new car? We that thing is sweet and shiny. Making sure it's clean. Nope, we ain't even ordering no food, bringing it in here because I ain't having the smell. Roll the windows down. Nope, we ain't doing it. You clean it, brighten it up, wax it, vacuum it. You do all of the things that needs to be done. Then over time, you just start spilling drinks. French fries shoved down into the crevices. Crumbs are on the floor. You even allow other people to abuse your car. But for some, like me, maybe it's not a new car. I haven't had a new car in a long time. But maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a relationship that you promise I'm going to love, honor, and cherish. But now I just loathe, and I hate, and I crush. Carelessness, it's the result of complacency. Again, you've lost your passion. And then we come to compromise. Compromise comes from carelessness. Ooh, George Michael, I hear you in my ear. Careless whisper. Because a lot of times that's what it is, a careless whisper of a good friend. You have careless treatment in relationships. Careless treatment in relationships usually wind up in troubled relationships. And before you know it, you're in a situation and you're drifting or you're drowning. And now you're just tossed around in the sea of compromise, the sea of carelessness. You're drifting away and you're wondering, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Because you let down your anchor, but you weren't anchored. You weren't anchored in his word. You're not anchored in, his, in prayer. You're not anchored in the truth. You're not anchored in listening. Now you're wondering, how do I go from where I am to where I need to go? How do I get from back here to there? Glad you asked. Somebody say, clean it up. Now you remember what I said in Hebrews 2, verse 1. So we must... Listen, say listen. We must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away from it. So we just need to get better with our listening. And I found, I was looking up ways, I was like, better listener, better listener, better listener. A lot of websites had the same things to say. I was like, wow, but yet we are not good listeners. But it's all out there. But a few things that I found that I thought was interesting was, number one, learn to listen. Learn to listen. Because we all have a tendency to listen out of generosity and not curiosity. We need to stop trying, we need to stop pretending and being nice, pretending that we're listening. 
You need to actually listen and be curious about what's going to be said next. Be in the here and now. Give your full attention to who's speaking. I remember a situation so clearly when I used to speak to someone and they would shake my hand. They would be so quick while I was speaking to go as they had my hand. So one day I decided to pull them back to me. And I said, I wasn't finished speaking and you are already ready to go. So be in the here and now. When someone's talking, don't try to jump ahead in the listening. Oh, I know what they're going to say. I know what they're going to say. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to finish the sentence. I know what they're going to say. I'm going to finish it. Don't try to jump ahead. Be in the here and the now. Eliminate your distractions. Turn off <laughs> anything that distracts you. Another thing that helps me when I'm trying to do something, I turn off the phone. I turn off the TV. I turn off music. Sometimes I have to turn off friends. Sorry, but sometimes I have to turn off friends. But I know you're asking, well, what can I do? I'm in church. Yep, you are. You can turn off your mind to the other things that need to get done. You can turn off in your mind that, oh, well, I was planning on going to lunch here, and I was planning on going with them, but they're not here, so now I need to make new arrangements for lunch. So what do I do? Turn off your mind to the bad that happened before you even came to church. How about we just come to church and worship without worry? And in closing, the last thing that I want to give you is repeat back what you heard. When you can, in communicating with somebody, try to repeat back what you heard them say to see if you actually understood it. Now, for church purposes, I don't want y'all running up to me and saying, okay, so what I heard was, and what you said, for church purposes, see if you can say anything back to yourself of what you heard. If not, <laughs> well, <laughs> what did you receive then? That's why pastor encourages notes, because notes may be better than your memory. So, remember these things if you find yourself drifting. And our theme for this whole year, for the whole year, is bless mode. So now we're going to get this blessing. And we'll probably talk about this more in groups as the week comes up. But before you leave today, before you leave today, before you step your feet outside of the building, before you leave, ask yourself, what did I hear? Because God had a word. So what did I hear? Then ask yourself, what did I learn? Because life is continual learning. Whatever that is that you heard or whatever it is that you learned, once you do that, your task is completed and it can be marked off completed. So if not, if you can't answer either one of those questions, what did I learn? What did I hear? Well, you got more spring cleaning to do. So get to it. But I want us to all stand as we close um, and prayer. And for me, I have, I have a passion for, I said that this was given to me during the pandemic for myself. But as I looked at people, I also um, survey people's lives, survey people just in the world with how things have become so nasty. And I'm not talking about from regular people, I'm talking about from Christian people. We've gotten so nasty, so unkind. And I would just look and I'd say, Lord, how did we get here as a world? It's not because of the president. It's not because of the vice president. It's not because of who holds any offices. It's because of us. And in the how did I get here, we have to get back to God. And I have a strong passion for, I even have dreams about 
God gives me dreams and um, at night when I'm sleeping and it wakes me up, it scares me so bad, of me fighting for people's salvation. Because the same way that earth here is real, heaven is real, hell is real, and we have some people that have drifted so far off, and then we have some that they don't drift because they've never been there. And so this morning as we close in prayer, I want to say a prayer for us to recommit ourselves, me first, to recommit ourselves to God. But then I also want to pray for maybe somebody that doesn't even know Christ as their Savior, because today is the day. You don't need to live another, life, another day without God. So today is the day. So let's, let's go to, to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I ask you to forgive us from drifting and for letting life lead us, Lord, instead of being anchored in you. From this day, Lord, help me to be anchored in you and to rely on you first. Not my friends, not social media, not my job, not anything, Lord. Help us to rely on you. And if you've never asked God into your life, if you've never known a time where you've asked him to be your savior, I want everyone to repeat with me, but specifically for those people, I want you to say this. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I know you sent your son to die for me. Come into my life and help me live for you. Today, I choose you to be my anchor. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And if there's somebody here for the first time, you don't know the Lord, and if you said that prayer, please find me, find Pastor Marshall. We would like to make a record of that, and we also have something for you. So we just want to thank everybody for being here with us today, for getting through the little hurdles that we had this morning. Um, be sure to share your mess the message this week with somebody. We share everything else with people. Share God's word with somebody this week. Um, we hope that you have a great week. We will see you back here next week in person and online at 10 a.m. Have a great week, guys.